Hey everybody, in this video we are going to talk about the cause of obesity and modern metabolic disease. The content in this video is building on what we talked about in the last video. That video is entitled The Cause of Obesity and Metabolic Disease. Today we're talking more detail about the autonomic nervous system. If you want to understand obesity, diabetes, and metabolic disease, you need to understand the content of these videos. Now, the autonomic nervous system, it is that branch of the nervous system that is controlling all of the things that you don't think about. You might think of it as the automatic nervous system. This nervous system is controlling things such as a dilation of your pupil, digestion, heart rate, bladder function, kidney function, all kinds of things. But these are things that you don't have to think about. They're controlled automatically by the autonomic nervous system. To start out, let's look at the relationship between the autonomic nervous system and the rest of the nervous system. So on this handy diagram, we see the nervous system, which has two main branches. One of them is the central nervous system, and this includes the brain and the spinal cord. The second major branch of the nervous system is the peripheral nervous system. This is further broken down into the somatic nervous system. You might think of this branch uh, controlling muscles. Uh, if I want to go on a run, I need to control my muscles. I do so largely through that somatic nervous system. Also part of the peripheral nervous system is the autonomic nervous system. Again, controlling things that we never have to think about. This is a very important branch of the nervous system relating to metabolic disease. I would argue that obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, fatty liver is driven primarily by dysfunction in the autonomic nervous system. Again, to understand this, you need to go back and watch the first video from last time. Now, that autonomic nervous system has two branches, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. Grossly speaking, the sympathetic nervous system, that is often referred to as the fight or flight branch of the autonomic nervous system. You're out in the foothills, in the mountains, you're hiking with your kids, and you come across a grizzly bear. We think of the sympathetic nervous system as that part of the nervous system that increases pulse, blood pressure, dilation of the pupils, helps us in these stressful situations. Very important. Now the parasympathetic is sort of the opposite. It is the rest, digest, heal, rejuvenate, recover. These two branches of the autonomic nervous system, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic, they are in an antagonistic relationship, offsetting and opposing each other. And in a healthy person, meaning in a person who has a healthy metabolism, there is balance between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic branches of the autonomic nervous system. And really, health is driven, metabolically speaking, by cycling through prominence of the sympathetic system, fluctuating with parasympathetic balance, rest, stress, rest, recover, etc. To really understand the autonomic nervous system, we must understand something called heart rate va variability, otherwise known as HRV. HRV, as the name suggests, is variability in the heart rate. Now, in this diagram, I've attempted to draw a heart. Now, controlling our pulse or our heart rate or how quickly the heart beats there are several things contributing to how quickly it beats. The sympathetic nervous system, those nerves going from the base of the brain to the heart, the sympathetic nerves increase heart rate. The parasympathetic nerves decrease heart rate. Like we talked about, sympathetic is that part of the system that stresses our system so that we can deal with the grizzly bear. Parasympathetic is rest, digest, recover. So consistent with what we just explained, parasympathetic nerves decrease heart rate, sympathetic nerves increase heart rate. It's important to understand 
that if the heart is left to itself with no nerves going into it, no sympathetic, no parasympathetic nerves, its baseline is its innate pulse is about 100 to 110. That's pretty fast. It's clipping along. In other words, if it has no input from parasympathetic, parasympathetic or sympathetic nerves, it's going to beat pretty quickly to demonstrate the relative influence of these two branches of the autonomic nervous system on heart rate, let's consider heart transplantation. When you take a donor heart from a donor and you take it out of that person, of course you're cutting all the nerves. When you transplant it into the recipient, if you don't do anything, in other words, give medications to help control heart rate, that heart will beat at around 100 to 110 times per minute. That's pretty fast. What this demonstrates is left to itself with no outside influence from any nerves, the heart will beat 100 to 110 times a minute. That's pretty fast. I mentioned this to demonstrate that under normal conditions, the parasympathetic nervous system has more influence on heart rate than the sympathetic nervous system. A normal heart rate in a normal healthy person is about 70. And this demonstrates that the parasympathetic nervous system has greater control relative to the sympathetic nervous system. It's bringing the natural heart rate of the heart down to about 70 in a healthy person. Now, why is this? One answer is the parasympathetic nervous system has a quicker switch on and off compared to the sympathetic nervous system. In other words, given different stimuli, that grizzly bear in the woods, it makes more sense to change heart rate with that branch of the nervous autonomic nervous system which is more quickly adjusted. So by switching off the parasympathetic nervous system, the heart rate is going to increase. If instead the sympathetic nervous system had primary control of the heart, it would take too long for the heart rate to adjust. I hope that makes sense. I say all this to try to explain something called the heart rate variability. Now we tend to think of heart rate as something we want very consistent over time that seems healthy. It's actually not. What we want is a lot of variability second to second, minute to minute in our heart rate. For example, if I'm laying down on the couch and I stand up pretty quickly, the blood tends to pool. And if my heart rate and blood pressure doesn't change, I'm going to get very lightheaded. That's an easy demonstration of within a second or two, we want pulse to change to accommodate the conditions of the body. So in this way, in a healthy person, heart rate changes second to second, just even a very little amount. And heart rate variability is the measure of how quickly the heart adjusts in its heart rate over time. In this way, we want a lot of heart rate variability. It's actually unhealthy to have low heart rate variability or HRV. HRV is something that's pretty easy to measure. I have an aura ring and that measures my HRV. There are several ways of doing it. A normal EKG where you put the leads, 12 leads, that'll measure HRV if it's programmed appropriately to do so. Now, all of this is the lead up to explain the function of that vagus nerve that we talked about in the last video. And the vagus nerve is the primary connection between the brain and the gut. And what I argued in the last video is that modern metabolic diseases, including obesity, diabetes, the first domino to go in the developing development of those diseases is dysfunction in the vagus nerve in those afferent signals going from the gut to the brain through the vagus nerve. Now, HRV, heart rate variability, it is more than anything else a measure of those afferent signals going from the gut into the brain through the vagus nerve. In other words, those signals from gut to brain 
through the vagus nerve are the primary driver of parasympathetic activity. So what we see is when that first domino falls in modern metabolic disease, in other words, when those signals going from gut to brain through the vagus nerve, when there's dysfunction in those signals, in that signaling mechanism, we see a HRV decrease. Heart rate variability decreases as that vagus nerve becomes more dysfunctional. Extremely important concept. As that parasympathetic activity decreases and as that vagus nerve becomes more dysfunctional, what we see in the autonomic nervous system is more sympathetic activity compared to parasympathetic activity. So what we see is an imbalance in a person's body. The sympathetic nervous system is almost constantly pedal to the metal, hyperactive compared to the parasympathetic nervous system. People talk about adrenal fatigue, but it's the basic idea that chronic stress, high cortisol, uh, really this is seen in every individual who suffers with obesity, diabetes, hypertension, fatty liver. It's this imbalance of high sympathetic tone is what we say and low parasympathetic tone. This is seen as low heart rate variability or low HRV. Okay. Now let's use this concept to demonstrate what we see in all those organs that are largely controlled by the autonomic nervous system. Do we see changes in those organs as a result of this imbalance? Those organs include the heart, the lungs, the liver, the pancreas, the kidneys, and the spleen. All of these organs are in fact affected significantly by this imbalance. And in fact, the chronic diseases that are so common now, high blood pressure, it's really a function of blood vessels in the kidneys receiving too much sympathetic tone and not enough parasympathetic tone. Fatty liver, that is driven primarily by too much sympathetic tone and not enough parasympathetic tone. Diabetes, same thing. What we see in diabetes is on the pancreas, there's too much sympathetic tone and not enough parasympathetic tone. There is imbalance. You can look at the visceral fat. Just released a video on visceral fat. Visceral fat is, are those adipocytes or fat cells in the abdomen and chest, the viscera surrounding the organs. It is the visceral fat that becomes dysfunctional and inflamed when HRV goes down and when we have this imbalance. A person who has a lot of visceral fat, you know there's an imbalance in the autonomic nervous system. Now, some people would argue, oh, in diabetes, in diabetes you have elevated blood glucose and it's that elevated blood glucose that's causing the nerve damage. Incorrect. That Dysfunction in the autonomic nervous system, that dysfunction in the vagus nerve, that comes before any changes in blood glucose. And you could look at any of these end organs, lungs, heart, liver, pancreas, kidneys, spleen, visceral fat. Decrease in HRV or dysfunction of the vagus nerve, that precedes end organ disease. It precedes fatty liver diabetes, chronic kidney disease, the accumulation of visceral fat, coronary artery disease, the classic example of heart disease. This dysfunction in the autonomic nervous system comes before any of those problems. Now you might ask, is this correlation? In other words, this is this dysfunction in the autonomic nervous system, this dysfunction in the vagus nerve, Ah, it's just correlated. It just happens to be happening when a person develops all these diseases. But get this. You can take any one of those organs, 
And if you cut the sympathetic nerves that are going to that organ in someone or an animal that is developing that particular disease, if you cut those sympathetic fibers, that disease stops progressing. For example, fatty liver. This is demonstrated quite clearly. What we see in fatty liver disease is initially there's a robust sort of explosion of elevated sympathetic activity compared to parasympathetic activity. And if during this imbalance you actually cut those nerves to the liver, the person will not develop further fatty liver disease. It's the same thing with the pancreas. It's the same thing with the coronary arteries. And of course, you can't do this in human beings, but it's been demonstrated in animals. You look at their coronary arteries, the arteries supplying blood to the heart, and you look at areas where plaque is developing. What you find is an expansion or growth of sympathetic nerve fibers right at that plaque. And if you cut those nerve fibers and re-examine later, you find that that plaque has not progressed and gotten worse. It's the same thing with kidney disease. In fact, nowadays, 2025, it is becoming increasingly common for nephrologists, kidney specialists, to recommend sympathectomy. That is cutting the sympathetic nerves to the kidneys to stop progression of kidney disease, including high blood pressure. So, I like to compare this to a filament in a light bulb. Imagine a, a light, a common light bulb in your house. It has a current going through that filament. And when that circuit is closed and the electricity flows through that filament, it lights up. Well, over time, if that light bulb is left on or it receives too much electricity, that filament will break down, it will burn out, and then that light bulb no longer works. This is precisely what we see in all of these organs that are controlled by the autonomic nervous system uh, in a loop, a circuit with the brain, which includes the vagus nerve. So when the vagus nerve becomes dysfunctional, those signals from the gut to the brain, you're breaking that circuit and as a result of that, you get more sympathetic tone compared to parasympathetic tone. And relatively speaking, you get sympathetic activity that is pedal to the metal, always on, and eventually it burns out. And this is what we see in each of these organs, that there's an initial sort of explosion or growth of sympathetic messaging, and then it collapses eventually. And we, this happens as that end organ disease progresses. This is the fundamental driver of modern metabolic disease, including obesity, diabetes, fatty liver, coronary artery disease. And there are very few people and researchers who have alluded to this. They have, many of them. But generally speaking, this is not understood or recognized. So the first step is dysfunction of the signals through the vagus nerve from the gut to the brain. Those are afferent signals. And what causes that? In our day, it is hyperpalatable foods or ultra-processed foods. The brain, the gut, the nervous system does not recognize those foods, and it causes dysfunction of that vagus nerve. From there, we see this imbalance in the autonomic nervous system. Too much sympathetic tone, not enough parasympathetic tone. This affects all of the organs in the viscera, including lungs, heart, liver, pancreas, spleen, kidneys, and the fat cells in the viscera. I hope this is helpful. If you enjoyed this content, please like this video and subscribe. There's more to come. Thank you for joining us.